Hi, Dad Can here. Today I'm reading number seven in the Geronimo Stilton series, Red Pizzas for a Blue Count. But before we get started, let's continue with our cheeses from around the world. Today's cheese is Nassal from Romania. Nassal is produced in a natural cave, traditionally used in the cheesemaking process from the Middle Ages. As the legend goes, the village of Nassal was owned by a rich and cruel count. One day some farmers ignored the commandments of the noble and took some pieces of his cheese for their children. They hid the cheese in a cave near the Nassal village and left it there. Weeks passed and one day a villager went into the cave convinced he would find the cheese rotten. To his surprise he found it in good condition. The cheese had changed its colour to a reddish yellow, but the taste was very good, despite the smell. Finally, the Count found out and punished the peasants. However, he kept the cheese from the cave and began serving it to all his noble guests, proud of its exquisite taste, and shortly thereafter began storing his cheeses in the cave too. But enough about cheese, let's find out what misadventures Geronimo Stilton gets up to in tonight's adventure. If you're sitting comfortably, let's begin. Oh, what a hairy, scary night. Oh, what a hairy, scary night. It was the month of November and it was so cold I had mouse bumps the size of marbles. I buried myself under my great aunt Ratsy's comforter and opened my book. It was a collection of ghost stories, the haunted cheese shop and other tales to make you squeak. An icy rain pattered against my window as I turned the pages. The wind blew open my window. My curtains danced about wildly like a ghost in an aerobics class. I jumped out of my bed to shut the window. Rats! I was still shivering and it wasn't just from the cold. Those ghost curtains looked pretty scary. As I climbed back into my bed, the phone rang. I bounced so high my bed did double duty as a trampoline. Ring, ring, ring. Who could be calling so late? It was almost midnight. I picked up the receiver. Hello, hello, who is it? I demanded. Hello, Geronimo, a voice answered. It sounded very far away. Yes, I am Geronimo, Geronimo Stilton, I shouted. It's me, Jerry Tails, the voice continued. I groaned. The me was my annoying cousin Trap. I should have known. Only Trap would bother a mouse in the middle of the night. Still, he sounded sort of strange. Trap, where are you? I asked. The line crackled loudly. I could only make out some of my cousin's words, but what I heard sent a shiver up my tail. I'm in Transratania, he squeaked. I'm at Castle Count von Ratoff. Get out. Before I could reply, the line went dead. Yes, it was certainly one hairy, scary night. Within Paul's reach. Seconds later, I had my sister Thea on the line. I just had a call from Trap. He may be in trouble, I told her. And you woke me up just to tell me that, my sister squeaked. I was in the middle of the most fabulous mouse dream. I was getting married on an enormous yacht. Only I couldn't make out who I was marrying. I wasn't surprised about the last part. My sister has more sweethearts than I have kinds of cheeses in my oversized fridge. Listen, Thea, I continued. Trap said he was calling from Transratania. Did you say Trap was calling from Transratania? Thea cried. We have to go find him right away. Let me check out the train schedule. We'd better get moving. Wait a minute, I protested. We can't just go scampering off. What about my job? My sister snorted. Your cousin's in trouble, and you're worried about that silly newspaper? Oh yes, I forgot to mention. I run a newspaper called the Rodents Gazette. Really, Jerry, your heart must be frozen solid, Thea shrieked. You should be ashamed of yourself. I chewed my whiskers. Well, m maybe we could go, I stuttered. We'll leave first thing tomorrow morning, Thea declared. The train leaves at half past six. See you at the station. 
when the cat is away. At six o'clock, I was at the station. I had been listening to the weather report. There would be clear skies all over Mouse Island, but fog, as always, in Transratania. Why, why, oh, why did my cousin have to get lost in the coldest part of the island? The coldest and the most mysterious, too. There were lots of stories about castles of Transratania. Some believe they were stirring with ghosts. At last, Thea showed up. She was dressed in a smart wool coat with a fake cat fur scarf and matching hat. Hey, big brother, how are you? she greeted me. She was grinning. Awful, thank you, I grumbled. How will a paper manage without me? I worried out loud. You know what they say, when the cat is away, the mice will play. My sister laughed. Oh, please, Jerry Kid, she scoffed. You're not all that important, really. In case you have forgotten, I run a newspaper, I said in my most serious tone. If I am not at my desk, who'll publish the Rodents Gazette? Oh, give me a break, Thea snickered. The office can run just fine without you. In fact, they'll probably be better off. No nervous old cheddar face breathing down their fur. I am not a cheddar face, I protested. But I have to admit, I did worry about the paper. After all, mice everywhere were reading it. By the way, Jerry Tails, they interrupted my thoughts. Do you ever read The Daily Rat? I was reading it the other day, and... Before my sister could continue, I jumped to my paws. The Daily Rat, I squeaked. How can you read such garbage? You know that paper is written by the slimiest sewer rats in the city? They would rob their own mothers for a good story. They would feed a cat the entire graduating class of Mouseville Elementary if it sold papers. That junk is only good for wrapping up rotten herrings. Yes, well, uh, that's all very interesting, Thea said. But last night I had a great idea for an article. I'll write a story on the castles in Transratania. Horror is very in these days, you know, she explained. Anyway, I've already sold the article, and they paid me a bundle. What did you say? Why was I so upset? Well, you see, Thea is a special correspondent for my paper, the Rodents Gazette. Could she really be working for my rivals over at the Daily Rat? What? Are you telling me you want to quit the Gazette? I squeaked. I felt faint. On my rodent's honour. Just then, I heard a creaking sound. My sister leapt in front of me. What's that? I said. What are you hiding? Nothing, nothing at all, Thea answered, waving a paw at me. What would I have to hide? Boy, are you jumpy today. I jumped to the left, but Thea was quicker than me. Next I jumped to the right. Again my sister beat me to the spot. After a few more jumps, I gave up. Enough with the dance number, I shrieked at last. What are you hiding? Don't get your tail in knots, Jerry Berry, Thea smirked. It's just a little old trunk. At that moment, the lid of the trunk opened. A pair of tiny ears popped out. It was Benjamin, my young nephew. Hello, Uncle Jerry, he squeaked. Benjamin, what are you doing here, I cried. I turned to Thea. We cannot take such a young mouse with us to Transratania. My nephew flicked his tail in the air. I'm not young. I'm nine years old, he insisted. Besides, Aunt Thea said I could help you. That's it, I thought. For once, I have to show them I'm in charge. Forget it, I announced in my most take-charge voice. On my rodent's honour, this time we do it my way, or my name is not Geronimo Stilton. Next stop, rat off. Ten minutes later, the three of us were comfortably seated on the train. Grrr. So much for taking charge, I grumbled to myself. Maybe I shouldn't have dropped out of that tough-talking mouse class I had signed up for last summer. The teacher was this old grey rodent with one eye. He had picked on me so much the first day of class, I was afraid to go back. I sighed and settled back in my seat. My sister was happily reading aloud from a tourist guide of Transratania. Hidden in the foggy hills of Transratania sits the mysterious Ratoff Castle. Meanwhile, Benjamin had snuggled under my coat. Brr, it's cold, but I don't mind. I'm so happy to be travelling with you, Uncle Geronimo, he squeaked cheerfully. I stroked his tiny ears and smiled. Did I tell you that Benjamin is my favourite nephew? An hour later, 
I pressed my snout against the window. The landscape was getting gloomier and gloomier. At every stop, mice seemed to pour out of the train. But there was no pushing or shoving at our stop. That's because by the time we reached Ratoff, we were the only passengers left. Ratoff! Next stop, Ratoff! echoed a lonely voice in the fog. Garlic, garlic, and more garlic. We climbed off the train and looked around. Now we just had to figure out how to get to Ratoff Castle. Excuse me, sir, which way to Ratoff Castle? I asked a tall, lean rat wearing a ragged coat. His eyes opened wide. He clutched at his garlic necklace. Then he disappeared into the fog without a word. My sister rolled her eyes. Let me try, she grumbled. You're absolutely useless, Jermeister. She tapped the arm of a passing female mouse. Excuse me, could you direct me to Count Vlad von Ratoff's castle, she said. Aye, shrieked the mouse. She scampered off, shaking a bracelet of garlic cloves in the air. We decided to check out the souvenir shop across from the station. A mouse with a crooked tail stood behind the counter. He looked at us with curiosity. Pardon me, I began. Yes, said the mouse. Could you direct us to a castle, I continued. Yes, said the mouse. We're looking for the castle of Count von Ratoff, I finished. At the name Ratoff, the mouse's eyes nearly popped out of his furry face. He flung a handful of souvenir garlic necklaces around his neck. A tag hanging from the necklace read, Greetings from Transratania. Then in smaller letters it read, Garlic and me, perfect together. How strange! I wondered what it all meant. But I didn't get the chance to ask. Before I knew it, the mouse was shoving us out the door. He clicked the lock behind us and turned out the lights. How rude, squeaked Thea. What a way to treat tourists. I would buy his silly souvenirs if they were the last ones in town, she ranted. Did you see those ridiculous garlic keychains? And who would want to send a garlic postcard? A few minutes later, we passed the fancy restaurant. I read the menu out loud. Hearty garlic pot pie. Jumbo garlic burgers. Pasta with extra garlic. What a strange menu. A large mouse came to the door. Would you like to have dinner, sir? he asked. His breath smelled like he had just sampled every dish on the menu. No, thank you, I gasped. But could you tell us how to get to the castle of Count von Ratoff? In a flash, the mouse pulled out a big bottle and gulped down the liquid inside. Judging by the stench, it must have been garlic juice. Get out, he shrieked, slamming a door in our snouts. What was it with the mice of Ratoff and their garlic? I thought about all the mice we had passed wearing garlic necklaces. I thought about the garlic bracelets and the garlic wreaths on the front doors. No, this wasn't just a passing trend, I decided. In fact, there was only one reason why rodents would keep so much garlic. A shiver ran up my fur. Some say garlic is what you use to keep vampires away. Who flew in the dark of the night? It was a pitch black night. You couldn't see your nose in front of your snout. We were like three blind mice trying to figure out which way to run. A sudden flash of lightning filled the black sky. That's it, shouted Benjamin. That's the castle over there. I caught a glimpse of the castle's pointed towers. What a perfect picture, cried Thea happily, pulling out a camera. Just then we heard a noise. A very odd-looking steam-powered car rattled toward us. The mouse at the wheel appeared to have a hunched back. He was dressed all in black with a dark hood pulled over his head. The strange rodent was humming an even stranger song. Who crossed the sky in the dark of the night? Oh, what terror, oh, what fright! Who crossed the sky on the wings of a bat? Discover the secret, ask a wise rat. Who crossed the sky in the dark of the night? Oh, what sheer terror, oh, what sheer fright! A huge copper boiler was attached to the front of the funny-looking car. Pipes of all shapes and sizes stuck out of it. Every now and then, the driver would pull a chain and smoke would shoot out of the largest pipe. The driver would cough and choke. Afraid of being seen or squished, we dove into the bushes along the side of the road. The mouse drove by, coughing and hacking away. He reminded me of my great Uncle Scratchy before he gave up smoking. We continued on toward the castle. 
but half an hour later we spotted another strange creature. This one wasn't driving a car, though. In fact, it wasn't even on the ground. It was flying through the air. It was black and looked sort of like a gigantic bat. No, not the kind of bat you'd used to hit a home run out at Ratball Field. I'm talking about the furry, black, squeaking sort of bat. The kind that comes out at night and sleeps hanging upside down. The strange creature seemed to have come from the castle. It flew over our heads and headed off toward the village. What was that? stuttered Benjamin, as the creature disappeared into the clouds. Beats me, said my sister. But whatever it was, I hope it smiled. She patted a camera. I just took its picture. Icicles on my whiskers. It took three hours to reach the castle. There are icicles on your whiskers, my sister told me. It didn't surprise me. I was so cold. I felt like a mouse popsicle. Benjamin had slipped under my coat to stay warm. I could hear his tiny teeth chattering. We had to find a way into the castle, or we were going to end up in the frozen food aisle at the King Cat supermarket. Thea checked out the walls on the side of the castle. I stayed in the front. At last, I spotted a big pipe that opened into the castle's moat. Over here, I called, crawling into the pipe. Quiet as mice, we scurried inside. I sniffed the air. These must be the castle's sewers, I choked. But there was no time to worry about the stinky smell. Holding one another's paws, we crept to the end of the tunnel. Revolting, that's what she is. We dropped into the castle's courtyard. All of a sudden, we heard a doorbell ring. I'm on my way, master, shouted a voice with a funny accent. It was a rodent we had seen driving that strange car. Phew, I am coming, I am coming, what's the hurry, he whined. We hopped down the stairs, four steps at a time. He was round and stocky. His head was sunk between his shoulders, as if he had no neck. His eyes bulged out of his face. One of his ears was torn, and looked as if a cat had left teeth marks in it. With one single leap, the hunchback grabbed the key to the front door, and turned it in the lock. Welcome back to the castle, master he mumbled, bowing low. The front door opened wide, and in came an even weirder rodent. It must have been Count von Ratoff. He was tall and lean, with a pointy snout, and he was wearing a floor-length red silk cape. His eyes had a sad look, and his whiskers drooped, as if he hadn't laughed in centuries. This mouse needs a night out at a good comedy club, I said to myself. Stand up and squeak, always cheered me up. Behind him came a little blonde mouse, who was also wearing a red silk cape. "'I hope you remember to run my bath,' she squeaked, staring down her snout at the hunchback. "'Bath what up bath?' he answered. He seemed to be trying not to giggle. "'It figures,' she cried. "'No one listens to a word I say around here. It's revolting. I don't even have a personal maid. Who ever heard of a countess without a personal maid?' She swept up the main staircase in a huff. Her silk cape fluttered behind her. Thea stuck her snout in the air, just like the little blonde mouse. Revolting, she whispered. That's what she is. Gong, gong. We followed the strange mice back into the castle. Everyone keep their tails low, and don't make a squeak, I instructed the others. Squeak, whispered Thea, winking at me. Why, oh why, will no one ever listen to me, I thought in despair. Hiding in the shadows, we crept quietly after the hunchback as he slunk toward the kitchen. A huge soup pot sat on the stove. He stuck a wooden spoon into the pot and tried to stir the contents. The stuff looked as thick as my grouchy grandma one whiskers split cheese soup. You could use that soup to glue down wallpaper. Eventually the hunchback's spoon got stuck. Creepy crawly crab apples, shrieked the rodent. He began to pull on the spoon with all his might. There was a sucking sound, and out flew the spoon. It hit the wall and stuck there. The hunchback stared at the spoon, then snickered. He bounced over to a huge gong and hit it with a big hammer. I peeked into the dining room. The Count and the young Countess were sitting at opposite ends of a very long table. The hunchback carried two crystal goblets over to the table. Then he poured a thick red liquid into each one. I gulped. I had a feeling this was no cherry berry punch. It looked just like blood. How yummy, said the young countess. She wiped her snout with a napkin, leaving deep red smudges. I shivered. 
The sight of blood makes me faint. Poor trap. Let's explore the castle while they're having their meal, I whispered. The long hallways were dark and spooky. Flickering candles cast eerie shadows on the walls. A thick layer of dust and cobwebs covered the furniture and many paintings. Poor Uncle Trap! I wonder what's happened to him, sobbed Benjamin, blowing his nose. He really is such a sweet, sensitive mouse. Meanwhile, they was busy snapping pictures right and left. These cobwebs are perfect, just perfect, she squeaked. I couldn't have asked for a better shot. This is going to be the scariest article ever. I wonder what I should call it. Maybe Blood in Transratania, she said thoughtfully. Or how about The Castle of Bad Blood? I clutched my stomach. Please do not mention that word, I whispered. Thea smirked. What word, big brother? she remarked. You mean blood? As in blood drive, blood sausages, and let's not forget blood hound. I began to turn pale. All of a sudden, a dark shadow loomed in front of us. Trip von Trappen. The ghost of a mouse, white to the tip of his whiskers, appeared before our very eyes. The ghost winked at us. Hi there, cousins. Long time no see, he said. I could hardly believe my eyes. It was Trap. Benjamin threw his paws around his uncle. Even Thea wiped away a tear. You're here, I gasped. You're still alive. Alive and kicking, Jerry Doodles. Where else would I be? Gone to Mouse Heaven to do a little cloud racing? My cousin teased. Then he snorted, sending a cloud of white dust into the air. I was just trying to get a bag of flour down from the shelf, and it spilled all over me. I look like a real bakery mouse, don't I? I stared at my cousin. But, Trap, I said, what about your phone call? We thought you were in trouble. What phone call? Trap said. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I called you. You see, I was in the middle of frying up some grasshoppers when I thought I'd give you a call. But then the grasshoppers started hopping all over the kitchen. So I decided to chop up some hairy caterpillars instead. But they kept itching away. So then I found this huge fuzzy spider and... They flicked a tail at Trap. Enough, she screeched. Why did you call, Trap? Do you need our help? If not, then I need to concentrate on the article I'm writing. My cousin didn't seem to be listening. He had a dreamy expression on his face. Well, demanded Thea. Trap snapped to attention. Yes, well, I just called because I was bored. I didn't mean to get your whiskers in or not. I thought you might like to get out of the sea. You know, take a little vacation, he explained. But now I've met the most beautiful mouse. I closed my eyes and counted to ten. I was trying not to strangle my cousin. Did I really just leave my job for a little vacation with Trap in Transratania? But what are you doing here in the first place? My cousin cleared his throat. Are you ready for some shocking news? He asked. Did you ever see a commercial on TV for Find Your Tail? You know, that agency that can research your furry tree, he asked. Actually, it's family tree, I corrected him. Trap waved his paw in the air. Whatever, he muttered. Well, ten days ago, I called the place, and it turns out that I may be a descendant of the distinguished Von Trappen family of Transratania. Yes, I may have royal blood, he squeaked. I groaned. Don't mention that word, please, I mumbled. My knees felt weak. Trap shot me a disgusted look. Well, it's always been very obvious that you and I are very different, he declared. I'm strong, and you are weak. I'm carefree, and you're a worrywart. I'm an accomplished chef, and you have trouble balancing your cheese on its cracker. Of course it's not your fault if no royal blood runs through your veins, he added. I practiced my deep breathing exercises. Why, oh why, did my cousin insist on using that word? Anyway, I came to Transratania to find some proof of my royal beginnings, Trap explained. They said the founder of the family lived right in this very castle centuries ago. His name was Trip von Trappen. Please, let me faint in peace. I still don't understand how you convinced Count von Ratoff to let you stay, Thea remarked. I mean, he doesn't exactly seem like Mr. Friendly Rat. More like Mr. Frightening, I thought. But I didn't say a word. They would just call me a scaredy mouse. Oh, Ratoff doesn't know about my research, my cousin chuckled. I just got myself hired as a cook. Which reminds me, tomorrow they'll be having a great ball here at the castle. I have to figure out the menu. 
The Count and his niece have unusual tastes. They cannot stand garlic, but they love all kinds of insects. Strange, huh? I don't ask. I just cook. Maybe I should make a nice bloodsucker's pie with my hearty blood sausage filling, Trap said thoughtfully. A creamy blood pudding would make a tasty dessert. What you think, cousin? My head was beginning to spin. Gee, Jurister, you're looking paler by the minute, Trap said. You look like you just gave ten pints of blood down at the sick mouse clinic. I closed my eyes. Maybe if I wished really hard, my cousin would disappear into thin air. I opened my eyes. No luck. He was still staring at me as if I was some silly mouse science experiment. Ugh, stop talking about blood. Can't you see it upsets me, I whispered. Trap snorted. Hey, don't blame me if you've got high blood pressure. I'm not trying to burst your blood vessels. I was just talking about my menu. After all, I'm a blue-blooded mouse now, you know. I don't have time for your silly games. I began to see stars. No, I'm not talking about movie stars. Then I blacked out. Suddenly my sister was squeaking in my ear. Geronimo, take a deep breath, she screeched, gently slapping my snout. My cousin leapt to my side and began smacking me hard on the other cheek. My eyes popped open. I glared at Trap. Please, 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 just let me faint in peace, I begged. Ah, Snobella. Just then Trap looked at his watch. Oh, rats, it's late. I need to get cooking, he cried. Count von Ratoff keeps a strict schedule. He's got a timetable for everything. Eating, drinking, sleeping. Flitting around in a creepy cave, Thea added, taking a close-up of some cobwebs. My cousin smirked. Maybe you just don't understand us royal mice, he coughed. Clearly the Count is a noble rogue, and his niece, Countess Nobella. Isn't she the most gorgeous mouse you've ever seen? My cousin sighed dreamily. Too bad about that fool she's engaged to. Schnoz Vonder knows, he went on. He's so ugly, he probably cracks every mirror he passes. He's so slow, he probably needs his mummy to help him get dressed in the morning. He's so dumb, he... Before Trap could continue, the bookcase he had been leaning against swivelled around, and he disappeared. Trap! we all shouted. But there was no answer. Seconds later, we heard poor steps approaching. We hid behind a large sofa with a crazy zigzag pattern. I peeked out just in time to see three mice approaching. It was the Count, the Countess, and the Hunchback. I could hear the Countess chattering away. For tomorrow night's ball, we need a butler and a footman, and of course I must have a personal maid, she squeaked. Count von Ratoff did not say one word. His eyes stared blankly ahead. This was one depressed mouse. It's almost dawn. I better go. Good night, uncle, called Countess Nobella as she headed up a steep, dark staircase. I watched her glide up the stairs. Very odd. Her paws barely touched the ground. But there was no time to think about the Countess. We need to find out what happened to Trap, I said. But how can we explore the castle without attracting attention? My nephew tugged at my sleeve. I know, I know, uncle, he squeaked. We'll pretend we are looking for jobs. They're looking for a butler, a footman and a maid. Great idea, little mouse, I cried. I'll be the butler, you'll be the footman. And they will be the maid. What? my sister shrieked. I came here to get a scoop, not to play maid to that snobby rat. A scarlet silk cape. We left the castle through the sewers. Then we crept around to the front. It was night and the castle looked dark and spooky. We knocked at the door. The hunchback greeted us. What do you want? he grumbled. I tried to look very professional. Are you looking for help by any chance? I said. We're looking for work. The shrimpy mouse smirked and let us in. I'm going to call the young countess. Wait here in the hall, he instructed. A few seconds later, I heard a rustling sound. I turned around, and the young countess was already beside me. How could she get there so fast, I wondered. I could tell Thea was just as puzzled as I was by the rodent's speedy entrance. Meanwhile, Snobella was looking us over carefully. She patted our fur. She checked our teeth. She looked in our ears and waved a paw in front of our eyes. I'm surprised she didn't ask us to walk a straight line or sing a song. Eventually she seemed satisfied, though, because she waved us on. You two can go put on your uniform, she said to Benjamin and me. Then she pointed at there. You can follow me, she told my sister. You will iron my wrap, sew the hem of my scarlet silk cape, and curl and powder my wig. Then you will polish the buckles on my silk shoes, and... 
Well, the list goes on. There are just so many things for you to do before the ball. She gave a smug little wave before scampering off to her room. My sister shot me a murderous look. I pretended I hadn't seen it. I knew she would never let me hear the end of this one. But I couldn't worry about it now. I quickly followed the sneering hunchback down the dark hallway. Twelve strokes. The hunchback led us to a huge walk-in closet. You will find your uniforms in there, he said. If you need anything, just ask. The hunchback turned to leave. Thank you, I said, pulling out two matching coats from the closet. By the way, what is your name? I called after him. The hunchback whirled around and squeaked, Don't bother me. Oh, well, I didn't mean to pry, I mumbled. I just wanted to know what we should call you. Don't bother me, the hunchback cried again. I gulped. The hunchback seemed to be getting upset. Maybe he had one of those really embarrassing names. I cleared my throat and tried again. <clears throat> Lots of mice have names they don't like, I told the hunchback. Yours can't be that bad. Don't bother me. My name is Don't Bother Me, he repeated. Benjamin was the first one to catch on. Oh, of course, Mr. Don't Bother Me. That's a great name, he said. The hunchback hobbled toward the door in a huff. Do you want us to brush off the cobwebs? I called after him. Once again, the hunchback whirled on me. Don't you dare touch the cobwebs, he shrieked, going into a tailspin. They are 16th century. I looked around the room. Well, what about some dusting, I offered. Again, the hunchback threw a fit. His tail smacked the floor. He bared his teeth. No, that's collector's dust, he screamed in a rage. I will chop off your balls if you go anywhere near it. Um, well, what do you want us to do then, I asked in my nicest voice. Go down to the kitchen and give the new cook a paw, the hunchback instructed. He shot a loving glance at the many cobwebs hanging over our heads. Then he stormed off. Just then, I heard a clock strike. Dong, dong, dong. I counted twelve strokes. Midnight, whispered Benjamin, grabbing my paw. Is that when the ghosts of vampires come out? Cherry red or strawberry red? Suddenly we heard a buzzing noise coming from the highest tower in the castle. It sounded just like an airplane before it takes off. I pressed my ear to the door leading to the tower. The noise got louder and louder. Then it slowly faded away. As we made our way to the kitchen, we passed a huge picture window. I glanced outside. Then I blinked. For a minute, I thought I spotted the strange black flying creature we had seen on our way to the castle. I shook my head and peered out the window again. No, nope, nothing there now. Uh, maybe I needed to make an appointment with Dr. Bifocals, my eye doctor, and get my eyes checked out. My glasses were sort of old. At that very moment, we heard voices coming from one of the rooms. I recognized the voice of the young Countess Snobella. Did you iron my dress? Not yet. Be careful, careful, you'll burn it that way, she commanded. I heard Thea grumble. Snobella didn't seem to notice. She kept ordering my sister about. Brush my fur. Easy, you're tugging at my curls, she squeaked. Now I must have some red polish on my nails, and my whiskers need to be curled. I heard a sigh. Next, I have to decide which cape to wear. The cherry red, or the strawberry red, or the tomato red. What do you think, she asked. But my sister didn't have a chance to reply. Ah, oh, what am I thinking, the countess smirked. You're just a simple maid. Only I can make the right choice. Again, I could hear Thea grumbling. This time it was even louder. My sister hates to be pushed around. Oh, oh I thought. I hope she doesn't get so angry she blows our cover. Luckily, the countess seemed to have other things on her mind. Put these fifty dozen red roses in the vase for me, she instructed. They're from my fiancé, Count Schnoz von der Nose. Ah, Schnoz, she added softly. So sweet, yet so boring. Her voice drifted off. Then I heard the sound of poor steps. Minutes later, my sister appeared. That rodent is a total nightmare, she fumed. She wants me to help her with everything. I wonder if she even knows how to brush her own teeth. But there's something even stranger about her, Thea continued, lowering her voice. She never removes that cape of hers. I wonder what she is hiding beneath it. She's probably not a mouse. I think she's really a monster. I glanced at Snobella's closed door. She is very pretty, though, I said with a shy smile. My nephew joined in. I think she's one of the prettiest mice I've ever seen, she cried. Thea snorted. She's pretty all right. Pretty evil, she snarled. 
Just then, Benjamin grabbed my paw. He pointed toward one of the rooms. It had a red door that was slightly ajar. It had to be the Count's bedroom. The red door. Let's check it out, whispered Thea, pulling her camera from her apron pocket. First she took a shot of the hall and the royal portraits hanging on the walls. Then she took a close-up of Count von Ratoff's door. It was covered in a dark red velvet. Wait a minute, shouldn't you be ironing Snobella's gown, I asked my sister. Thea sniggered. I'd rather iron her mouth shut, she replied. Anyway, we need to find Trap. After we do, Miss Snobbytail will be ironing her own gown. Of course you'll have to figure out how to turn on the iron first. What a ninny! I pushed the door open a little wider. The Count's room was a vision in red. The deep red carpet was the same colour as the ceiling. Shiny red wallpaper covered the walls. Heavy red drapes hung over all of the windows. We approached the four-poster bed. I drew back the red satin curtains and jumped. That was odd. There was no mattress. I noticed a strange hook screwed into the wall above where the mattress should have been. I wondered what that was for. Then I spotted a glass containing a pair of dentures. Count von Ratoff's teeth were pretty sharp. On the same bedside table sat a crystal glass filled with a red liquid. Could it be blood? What is it with these royal rats, I thought. Do they enjoy seeing a grown mouse cry? I'm going to faint, I realised. That's all for this time. Part 2 of Red Pizzas for a Blue Count will be uploaded soon. So please make sure you're subscribed so you'll be notified when that happens. That's all for tonight. Thank you and good night. What you to dream? I want you to dream. I want you to dream.